Oh, welcome back. Another update on Clanger. I've been busy the last uh, well week, week and a half, uh, doing repairs to the bulkhead. Um, had a chance discussion with a chap from Classic Bulkheads, a young man by the name of by the name of Anthony, who hereinafter shall be referred to as the young man. Um, during that conversation, I explained what I'd been doing um, with Clanger and the condition of the bulkhead. And there was some ve uh, discussion around what what um, series bulkhead I'd got. We knew it was a series three, but there's about eight different variants apparently. So I forwarded him to the YouTube channel. Um, a couple of days later, we got back in touch with each other and had a discussion along the lines of how we could help each other out. Uh, Classic Bulkhead supplying me with some parts and some prototype parts in exchange for folding stuff and uh as in cash and i give him some feedback on to on to basically how, how i'm getting on with it um and a shout out so who are they um family run firm uh i sus suspect it's set up by his father anthony my guess is in his mid-20s might be, might be a very young looking 30, I don't know. Um, but the two of them are basically, all they do is repair Land Rover bulkheads. And I think predominantly series versions. Um, working out of a small unit in the Midlands. And I'll put a link on below. They've got a website which Anthony's busy setting up and continually adding products to. Which is the purpose of sort of my involvement at this point. Was to review some of the prototype parts that they've been developing. So to cut a long story short, I bought a couple of footwells and got a box of all the bits with it, uh, included within which are the basically enough to repair the full front valance, including the, the uh, surrounds for the fart flaps. Um, and at that point, I would, would acknowledge uh, Richard from, uh, I think it's, uh, Church House Classics, uh, Mr. Fidar Fanar. Hello, Mr. Gravity. Um, it was from his video that I got the name Classic Bulkheads, uh, and it took me a bit of digging about to find them. At first point, the website was only just up and running. So today's update is about me converting some of the prototype parts. Um, the, the main one is the central valance, uh, which Anthony said look I, I can send you this it's a reject but it's a lot better than what you've got uh and he says it'll take a bit of chopping about to get it in and get it to fit but um yeah it's better than what you've got oh, yeah, there's some good metal on it um so done a bit of messing about with that and it's gone in and yeah it's uh, <laughs> it's certainly a better job now that's him uh, and then I've been fitting up the corner units and making use of the internal support structure that I uh, welded up in a previous episode. Um, as an executive summary, if you don't want to sit and watch through the rest of this, um, you can repair a bulkhead. Uh, it does require quite a lot of uh, patience. Um, stick at it. It takes time. And I guess the key of it, which is what Anthony told me, is don't go mad with your grinder at the start. Take the bits out as you're ready to replace them, because otherwise you lose all your references and it starts dropping apart. Um, so that's why we've got a combination of new parts and knackered footwells, top of balance, which is barely held on now. Um, but we're getting there. Uh, made some progress. Be interested to get some feedback and uh, leave your comments below, because... Uh, Anything I can feed back to Classic Bulkheads is going to give them a bit of benefit in terms of uh, looking forward. Their plan is to continue rebuilding Bulkheads on site, their place, but also to make available some of the parts which you'll see in today's and next week's episode. Um, so that if you want to do it yourself, you can do. Um, it certainly saved me a hell of a lot of headaches, um, not least of which this corner assembly was a bloody nightmare because I'd got very little to work from. Um, it's hard measuring up a pile of rust. Right, enjoy and uh, speak to you later. Right, so this is the driver's side upper quarter 
was a bulkhead, <coughs> or would be if there's anything left of it. That's the reinforcing structure inside, which we'll come back to. That's the outer corner of it, just roughly clamped in position. That is the inner portion, which basically sits like that. We can all that for now because we don't need that just at the moment. And then that is the front quarter. Um, obviously the crease line there matches up with this line here. That then gives me, for all intents and purposes, that one there to the one there. And then all the bits clamped up. There's then a joining piece, which is that bit, which needs a bit of work on it to tweak it. Um, it's it was a prototype which didn't meet spec, but it sent it up. Said it's better than what I've got. Just needs a bit of chopping about. But obviously, this edge here welds up to this bit, goes across, and it replaces all of this section. Um, that's the reinforcing piece, which is double skinned here. The two holes on it. And that basically gives me then the whole of that front fascia at this at this level. What it doesn't give me are these pressed um, vent positions and the hinges. Um, what the nice young chap Anthony is uh, explaining to me is they are in the process of developing that as a full piece but they haven't got the press tooling sorted yet. So I bought a couple of generic pieces, which I've showed you earlier, and they kind of fit there. and look great until you start looking at the detail of them, and they don't quite match up with the corner profiles here. They're missing a point here. Uh, what Anthony was saying is because I was saying, Oh, that's all right, I just plaster that over the top there. And he said, Well, your problem is you then got a lot of patching work to do here, which I'm yeah, not overly chuffed about. Um, what he's suggesting is that I actually cut out this rebate and then weld it into this, which is a shitload of work. Um, but he's basically saying that's that's the way that they do it at the moment to give them that uh, pressed gully. He said they are they are those set that portion of it is spot on, um, and yeah, it is. Albeit, put it there. Yeah. So um, I'm scratching my head on that one at the minute. Um, it's cut out for a defender bonnet. Um, obviously the Series 3 bonnet line follows a bit lower down so they didn't new um, so I've got a few bits of uh, messing about to do before I can start chopping anything first of all is to remove that all the way across uh, he thought he'd stuck one in for me but uh, he hasn't so um, I'm going to slice through the skin take this off and then grind the skin off the back face of the drip tray got a bit of a needs a bit of a repair here and at the same to the side but that then gives me a flat face to work off um and then i'll look at modifying that in terms of the sequence of putting it together what the nice young man has suggested is that i weld on the bench the inner skin corner to the corner piece and then this one to it down the corners and then basically use that radius there to pick up on this position as a datum my only issue is having something to weld to <laughs> it's chicken and egg I, uh, I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to do it now. Um, 
that's what that's where my headache comes now. What do I? I need some sky hooks now. I could just lash on a couple of braces out of here, pin stuff to it, and wait until I've got the full width. Then I know that I'm, I've got it. But if you if you take all of this front valance all the way along, it's welded to the back, and the back of mine ain't up to much. Um, I'm just going to pull us forward and then uh, we'll have a look at the back face of it. So that's the inside of the driver's side. Um, and if you remember, I had made patches to fit here and another one to fit all the way along. And the nice young man sent me this. So, aside from where I've got it clamped here, that could weld him, and then I've got a nice structural piece all the way across and I've got the flange for half an hour for hanging the footwell off, build that up as well. But in terms of um, stick it, sticking the front piece to it, to anything, it's, it's, that's the issue. I need. I think what I need to do is is make up some kind of bracketry, just to give me temporary fixes in here before I do that, or I do that I have to do the inside faces first, so that I've then got something to build to. Ooh. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense to have that as a as a solid piece to work from. Uh, and these are all right. This is all right, but the the rusty bit, which is where everything bolts to or welds to, is knackered. So jury's out on that one at the moment. Of course, if I decide to do these bits first, I've got to come up with alternative arrangement for holding it whilst I do it. Not the end of the world, but. Uh, yeah, still want something to do him. But, you know, that's got to be a hell of a lot better than what I was at. Um, longest welding seams, because I've got to now go all the way along with it. Um, and then I can stick through my uh, two bits at the front there. Right, I'll waffle on. Right, well, we've had a think about it overnight. Um, Spent most of this morning packaging up scrapers and getting them out of the post. Um, most of them off to the Southern Hemisphere. Thanks for the interest, chaps. Right, so uh, I've decided I can't really put anything to it until the rain gutter's off. That'll then enable me to position that piece, which will then enable me to get that into position. And it goes underneath this leg. But it does it, it it of itself. There's there's nothing then to stick it to. So the, I think that the first piece that really needs to be on and solid is going to be this middle mem member here, which is the bit that needs modifying. And I can't modify it until I've got that off. So that's my plan. It's kind of like uh, chicken and egg, and I'm currently going for an omelette. So I'll get my grinder out. Right, so rough centre line, centre line off between the two uh, vent holes. These two are matching up. 
as well as it can be expected. Um, the mismatch, it's been cut for a different, different uh, bulkhead. Uh, and I think the young man was telling me that I think there was eight different styles of bulkhead used on the Series 3 over its generations. Um, so I need to basically cut this section out here so that that goes back to that wall there where it picks up. Um, need to determine what's happening here. That might need this furlange return taking off and then a piece adding on. But what I was bothered about to start off with is, is there much of an overlap between the new side piece, basically this seam here, and there is, because that needs to be there. So I've got material to be able to move that across. Because this is double skinned, I can then nick the top skin, spot it through, and then seam it down later. <laughs> he says optimistically, and same on this side. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're a little bit vague because we haven't got a pattern to follow, but it's around about there. So looking at it, I've got inch, inch and an eighth to go around. So I think that's uh, got to be the, a better starting point. Um, the only bit I need to look at now is on the flip side. Um, the two panels that come, come in from the ends... I need an idea. I think they finish somewhere around here, which means that that centre section, which this is then stitched to above that boss, that's solid, that stays. So then I've got basically this piece pinned to the back face. And because that's pinned, I can put these positions in, get those stitched round, and then, uh, you know, with the corners on. And then I'm starting to get some kind of framework to hang stuff off because at the moment every bit I take off just makes it more floppy so um, got to take it easy with the grinder right I think we'll have a attack that and get that right and then uh, have a way up as to what's the best way of fitting that in um, you can see that it's got the return on for the uh, fart flaps thank you Richard um, which I'll have to bugger about with here so that it sits in um, and then I've got to decide then how I uh, address because I know the top piece uh, hang on a minute Just slide that under there so if we ignore the pieces I spent a week and a half making with the roll former and we utilise this one that bead and that bead cover the lens, which means the only bits I'm short of are the profiles at the ends, which means I could cut them off. Those bit of a waste, but uh, it means it's less welding. It means I'm only welding them in round this section. And as we all know, less welding is better. Yeah. Right, feeling marginally more confident now on the basis of, uh, of developing a cutting plan, as Baldrick would say. Inside piece, albeit from the opposite side, but you can see roughly where it comes to on there. So it's basically given me the replacement steel for along this section here, which is what this is ultimately got to glue to. So I can't stitch that bit on, that bit's on, and vice versa. But this bit stays. So if I can get that lot in and held with that bit of mod on the end there, that effectively gives me one panel held onto the section, middle section. And then I can start working out my distances to pick up these side frames welded to the front face is welded to that at that point i fairly confident i can then 
move the thing forward and go and fit these on the rear face because they will fit up to that corner piece somewhere around here and that bit onto the ace back end of that i hope this makes some kind of sense uh, but yeah three-dimensional chess <coughs> in the in the dark <laughs> yeah so just going back over it before I start chopping any further metal. Um, there's two holes this side. I'm not entirely sure because there's nothing on mine. But there's two holes here which aren't on it. So it could well be that this has been when this was folded, it's been folded back to front and upside down, or I don't know. Doesn't matter anyway. Because as I say, it wasn't a piece he was expecting feedback on because uh, he just said, "Oh, it's." It's not right, and uh, but it's better than what you got. Um, this return flange is three inches, and I've only got what two and a half, two and three quarters. So I've got to take off about half an inch all the way along. However, I've got to make sure that I've got some steel to weld to, and that's that's uh, quite a big radius at the back there. So what I'm thinking of doing now. Is nicking this and just taking this section out now because it's not not attached up there to anything uh, very least I can do is nick it across the bottom um, we know we've got these holes lined up so we're good with these so I think that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to take 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 the next bit out uh, remove this bit um, I just need to drop a couple of put vertical lines down so I know where to pick this up it should be right in relation to the centre line anyway. And as I say, I think it from memory, it was just where the wiring loom came through. So I'm going to take that out and then see if I can clean up the underside of that to get some kind of edge to weld. How the bead now I go about welding it is my next chore. But uh, let's see what we can find out. All right, so that's that bit locked away. So that's a separate piece. That's a separate piece. This bit's quite well on, so I need to do a bit more uh, cutting through. Um, but you can see now, any kind of rigidity's gone. It's looking a lot more like a Swiss cheese. So I'm gonna go on there, uh, clean that face up, make sure I've got some steel to weld to. Take this bit off, back to here, that bit out. And then all that's left then is basically this top front here. And we, our, our new piece will actually run straight across. So I've got to kind of nick it and sit it either side of there. And then take all of this like that back to here. I'll get on do with that. Well, we're just uh, starting to chew away on the inside of this. I'm oh, sorry, the front face of the uh, vent flap seal area. So I want to take that off and leave the inside because that's actually good. I've left myself what I hope is enough material around there to be able to cut out and join up to it. Take the rest of that off. I've cleaned off these areas. And it's looking as if I've got some half decent metal there. And that's all right under there. It's a bit more cleaning off. But it's the it's that face wrapped under. That's where I'm welding it to. So it feels okay. But yeah. All of this lot I'm hoping I can clean up. I've actually got a repair patch for the length of that somewhere. Which I made. Might as well use one of them, eh? Oh, well, that's uh, looking something like. I've got to basically cut this section here. Take it out when I do the inside skin. Because it's knackered. Um, and I can't recall for the life of me how long a piece I made up for it. But the rest of this I should be able to get spot weld through. All the way down. That's all cleaned up alright. And it's not too bad underneath there. Uh, I think once I do, the last, thing, last job I'll do before I actually, uh, well I'll probably tack it on. Well, the last job I'll do before I tack it on is probably just treat all this face with um, a rust-eating 
consolidating primer cum super glue cow poo whatever they call it i don't know you know what i mean hmm right, well i've got to stop grinding now because give it half an hour and then uh, go get the dog so we'll start offering up the uh, new part way up what i need to do there There's, that was all rusted out so then uh i'm not entirely sure what i'm going to do with that the sensible thing to do would be lop it off here and then make an entirely new piece you can imagine that being fun i'd have to make her i guess a wooden former and then beat the crap out of it to make it fit yeah hey ho so i'm just weighing up what's the best way for this do i cut out a section on here and fit it around what's existing knowing that i've got a patch that side or do I actually just cut this across take a line from there right the way through cut it across remove that put this on and fire it all the way through so it maintains its rigidity and all the rest of it doesn't have a natural fold line in the middle and then when I come because I know that I've got both top and bottom are going to miss these points so i'm going to be inserting these bits anyway i think i've just answered my own question i think i'll cut that off put this on and fire it straight through because it gives me a nice rigid straight edge and then reinstate the end of these because i'll still have the inside guide for the uh edge of the hole on these bits by basically cutting the two of these off and putting them in. I think that'll do it. Yeah. Because, as I pointed out earlier, this one's already cr crumbling here. That one can't, I, bet, I very much doubt that's got much life left in it. It's very thin. It had a shitload of uh, gobbo in there where the uh, original join was. Well, I'm going to do away with that, can't I? And just, I'll just have a very, hopefully, a very tight seam down there. And somewhere around here and here. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. So we'll put a cut across there, clean that up. And it just makes fitting that quite a bit simpler. Because all I've got to do then when it comes to fitting the other piece, take that lip off and probably get away with lap weld it, lap weld it onto that. Not sure. Right, I'll nick the end of my finger somewhere. Righto. Well, that's the first uh, sort of off offering up in a roughly adjacent manner. So we're taking the uh, alignment from the seam of the window, vent, vent flap, um, and it drifts out here, basically because of the corrosion on this is and the, the distortion on the back face. It's looking like I've got them fairly adjacent. I've got to trim a bit more off this section here to free up for the steering column. And then I've got a bit of jiggery pokery to do under here and add a bit in here and chop that bit out, which is for the heater access. But yeah, that, that's uh, all of a sudden starts looking a bit more rigid. Um, I've just spent 20 minutes cleaning off a bit more of the paint so I can get some uh, uh, Coralus Rust Nibbler um, Undercoat Primer Stabilizer, whatever you call it. And I figured what I'd do before I spot weld that in, I'm going to paint the inside of that with the Coralus stuff and do the inside face of the rear that's remaining. Um, I've just got to be a bit careful that I don't start painting bits I'm going to be trying to weld onto. So it defeats the object. Only problem is it's about four degrees in the workshop, so paint ain't going to go on very well, and it's certainly not going to dry very swift. So uh, might have to do a bit of preheating. Um, anyway, so I'm going to finish off fitting that one, um, and I'm going to look to see if I can't set up some just a couple of location points so it goes back to the same spot each time. Of course, it's a bit vague. 
but it's it's only offering it up at this stage. And I need to reproduce these two over here. They are the holes that mount, or they should be the holes that mount the fuel filter on the bulkhead. I think it's a fuel filter. Um, when I got clanger, the fuel filter was hanging down on its pipes and the holes were basically just rusted out. Uh, and there weren't any on that side. But yeah, looking a bit more uh, positive. Good one. Amazing what a night's sleep can do, isn't it? Right, so uh, I've put a couple of self tappers in as uh, temporary fixes to give me a realignment each time. I've scribed on a centre line, which is the centre of that, and a centre line down this. And I, just from eye, I can't actually <laughs> measure where I was out. It was absolutely bob on. So that's not bad. So this is the uh, rebate in the middle. And when that's all seated nice and tight in there, this is just sitting off a little bit. You can see the flex there. So I'm just going to basically get a line on it from here across and just basically tap it back a bit. It, I, it's not going to be any good trying to weld it with a TIG when there's 40 or 60 thou gap behind it. So uh, I'm just going to ease it in a little bit with me tappet.